The next trick is to get this wire in here installed in this arm so that arm is properly positioned on the body. I mark the approximate center of this in both directions. This one's a little bit low on this side. And I take a center punch and I make an indentation there. Now when you get your castings, they will have a little dimple in there that tells you where to drill. These don't have that. Now I'm using a piece of 330 seconds wire. That piece of 330 seconds wire will go through and this will have a hole drilled in it will push on there. The likelihood of getting this drilled exactly in the perfect position for perfect alignment on there is not very good. So I start off drilling a small hole and then I will drill a hole larger than 330 seconds. This hole was drilled and then I took the uh, drill bit and I used it to ream that hole a little bit one way or the other until I fit that arm on there and it looks like it's positioned properly. When it is, and I fill this with epoxy and I stick that rod in there and I'll show you how to put a shield on there. And I push that on, use a rubber band, hold that in place and wait for that epoxy to cure. I drill most of this by hand. Put a drill bit on here. I only want to go about this deep. I do not want to run outside the fingers. So I'm going to drill it at about that angle and in line with that clenched fist. That's deep enough. Go any deeper than that, you're going to be pushing your luck. When we drill this hole, and I should mention that I'm using a 564 bit, and this is my pilot hole bit. I drill my first hole with this, then I'll progressively drill it larger. I put the bit in that little center punch mark, and I want that bit to be 90 degrees this way and 90 degrees this way. Again, I'm just doing it by hand. And I check that. That's good enough. Same thing on these. When I drill the body and your conductor, the box on the back of it will be deeper like this one. That's something I've had to change. You'll have an indentation here. Drill a pilot hole and again you want to line this up visually, at least I do. And I can see where the hole's supposed to be on the other side. Check my alignment. Looks pretty good. Just keep going. Let's 
See the hole is in the right position here. It's in the right position here. Now if you don't like that, if you don't feel comfortable in drilling that at a right angle, get yourself a piece of aluminum or wood, hardwood block that you know is square and go to a drill press and drill a hole in there. And then run your drill through that and use that wood block to keep you aligned when you start drilling this hole. Once you get through this first part, if that's not exactly right, you can bend it around a little bit until you get it lined up with the dimple which will be on your casting. And then when we go and drill the larger hole through there, that will uh, ream that out correctly. I now have a 3 seconds bit in here and I'm going to ream this out. Then I usually take a piece of 332nd piano wire and just let it run in there for a little bit. It's just to loosen up that hole. Drill out the arms to 332nd. You don't want to go any further than you did before. And now I'm going to drill these out to 7 64ths. When I put my 3 seconds piano wire in there, that's going to be sloppy on that wire, and I want it like that. So I can look on here, I can look at my alignment. I can wiggle that around. I can take this drill I can wallow out that hole a little bit to where it's really sloppy. That gives me some up and down play and sideways play. I put that on there until I get my shoulder in alignment and this is sitting flat I may have to rub this on my sandpaper a little bit to get this squared up just keep working with that until that's good this 330 seconds wire is very sloppy in there and that's what I want I'm going to cut some notches in this wire to give a little tooth to that epoxy Put epoxy in that hole, stick that in there, and put it on the body. I'm going to put a glue shield on there. I take a piece of plastic. Now I've punched a 332nd hole in there. You could drill it. It's going to give you a little flare. You want that flare to the outside. My wire's got some notches ground in it to give tooth to the epoxy. I put the epoxy in that hole, stick it in there, and I clean up any excess that comes squeezing out. Push that shield down on there. And I push that on there. I put a rubber band on there to hold that until that epoxy sets up. This piece of plastic with a good tight fit on there will prevent the epoxy from attaching to the body of the conductor. When the epoxy has set up, Take the rubber bands off and gently work this loose and gently work this plastic shield off. You'll have an arm that's a good fit. Then you do the other side the same way. When you take this apart and you pull off the spacer, If you're not exactly happy with the way that turned out, you get a do-over. Chuck that up in your drill. 
on low speed. Twist that rod out of there. Take your drill bit. Drill that epoxy out of there and do it again. And here we're going to use a 330 seconds axle collar. That collar will be tightened and that will adjust the free play in this arm, keep it up against the body. I'm going to drill a suitable size hole in this. With the wire sticking in there, I'm going to silver solder that wire in there. And that wire sticking out will be my control rod for the arm. I'll do that for both arms and I'll do it for the head. One more hole to drill in here. It's going to be right in the center of the neck. We'll start off with a 564th, making sure that bit is square. And I open that up to 330 seconds. A normal drill bit will not reach all the way down there. So you will need a longer drill bit. You can take a piece of piano wire, grind the end off of it, make what is called a D-drill. After you drill this part up here, you run that down in there and use that to drill. That will work. This takes a little longer. When you get ready to work on the main body, you go about it just like the arms. Scrape down these seams. Now I've scraped these down, but I haven't sanded them yet. Clean this up in here, all along there. You do it just like the hand. This resin material is, is pretty tough, but like anything else, it can be broken. So when you're working on one of these, like on the leg, cradle this in your hand. So when you're pushing on this, you're pushing on your finger, you're not expecting this wishbone to support any deflection. Support that. When you turn it over, support this. When you're working on the inside of the leg, support it like that. If you're working on one of the arms, we know that we could break off a thumb if we tried, so don't do that. Hold that in your hand and protect the area that is fragile. I'm working on the initial three sets of castings for this project. That's 12 pieces total, and I haven't broken anything yet. Treat them like they were glass. The resin is a lot more durable than that. Just be careful.